All right, here we go. Thank you for being here tonight. I appreciate you being here, and um, we're continuing this study on the cults, critiquing the cults, and so uh, we've been going through. We talked about the Mormons, and then we talked about the Jay. Jehovah's Witness, and now we're going to talk about one that you're probably less familiar with, and that is the cult of Christian science, and which is always funny to me that it's neither Christian nor science, and so it's kind of funny that they chose that name because their founder, she was neither a Christian nor a scientist, uh, but they chose the name Christian Science. You may be familiar, they have a publication they put out, kind of like Jehovah's Witness, you know, they distribute their literature through the Watchtower and Tract Society. Theirs is called the Christian Science Monitor, and I think it's called just the Monitor now, because one of the things cults do is once they are labeled a cult, they start changing their names. Just like the Watchtower and Tract Society, now it's just called the Watchtower. They, 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 that's one of the ways they try to incorporate themselves into mainstream Christianity, and so the Christian Science Monitor, if I'm not mistaken, now they just call it the Monitor, and it's supposed to be a news source, of course it's not. And um, whenever I talk about Christian science and the fact that it's neither Christian nor science, it always reminds me of one of my professors at North Greenville, Dr. Bill Murray, and not the actor Bill Murray, but the, but the college professor at North Greenville. And Dr. Murray was, I mean, I just don't know how to describe him to you, but he was rough and he was gruff. And, uh, and he just, he was, he was hardcore, man. And I, we would joke with him because he would always talk about, this is unrelated except for that it's neither Christian nor science. I would talk about like Charles Finney and some of these heretics from the, from the Second Great Awakening that kind of messed everything up. That's a different story for a different day. And Finney wrote Systematic Theology. And if you know Finney never went to seminary, he was not a theologian. So Dr. Murray would always say, well, it's neither systematic nor theology. So anyways, I always think about that when I talk about Christian science, it's neither Christian nor science. And so anyways, um, uh, critiquing the cults, Christian science, it's neither Christian nor science. Next slide. And this is one of the books that I've tried to, um, you know, I don't want to, blast you with buy this book buy this book um i told you at the beginning kingdom of the cults is more of a textbook it goes over all the cults but then there's individual books on specific cults and this by walter martin and norman clan the christian science myth that is a book that they wrote specifically regarding christian science so um and if you don't want to buy all these different books you can just buy the one book kingdom of the cults and it covers it has a chapter on all of them and, uh, and it's a great textbook, and it's kind of become the textbook for cult studies. When I was an undergrad at North Greenville, guess what one of our textbooks was? Kingdom of the Cults. And when I got to seminary, and guess what the textbook was? Kingdom of the Cults. It's, it's become kind of the hallmark book of cult studies. So anyways, next. Uh, the founder. Let's talk about the founder, because I want you to understand... How cults get started is Mary Baker Eddy. Mary Baker Eddy. She was born in 1821, died in 1910. Her parents were strict Congregationalist Christians. For those of you that don't know, Congregationalist is an older denomination in its early form, very conservative, and somewhat similar to Baptists, but also to Presbyterians. The original Congregationalists, they did baptize babies, but they were Congregational in their government style. That means that they didn't have a board over them, so they were Baptistic in that way. There's not many of them left, and there's certainly not many of them around here. Um, I, I can think of like one Congregationalist church I've seen um, in the southeast and i'm sure there's more but i'm just telling you it's not a popular denomination anymore and it never really was that big in the southeast but that's what she grew up the congregationalist back then and especially in their founding they were very closely related to the puritans and so they were very conservative very strict very puritan and so in their theology so she came up in a strict sound Orthodox home. Uh, unlike Joseph Smith, you know, we talk about the founder of Mormonism and his dad was an occultist and uh, a practitioner of witchcraft. She didn't grow up in that. She grew up in a sound 
if you want to say normal Christian home, so her story's a little bit different. Um, but from her childhood, she suffered with mental and physical illness. Uh, she was not a well person. This has been this is not an attack on her from that perspective. This has been well documented by many historians who study cults and stuff that. Uh, for lack of better terms, she was off her rocker pretty much her whole life, and that's been well documented, and you can research that, uh, that she had a lot of issues upstairs, if you catch my drift. Moving on to the next one. Um, during her day, there was a pseudoscience known as mesmerism, and it was a popular uh, thing that it did not help her, though, and her followers deny it, but however... It's been documented from historical resources uh, that she also had a morphine problem. In short, she was mentally ill. So mesmerism was a pseudoscience back then. Um, you've seen it on movies where they say you're getting very sleepy and when I snap my fingers, you'll bark like a dog and that kind of thing. Well, there was practitioners of mesmerism in her day and that was big. And they thought that would help her and it did not. Um, and it's also, again, to this day, follows the Christian science deny it, but unfortunately for them, there's so much historical evidence for it that they can't deny it. Uh, she had a morphine addiction. And so you and I both know when somebody has mental health issues and you put drugs in the mix, that's a cocktail for disaster. And so this is Mary Baker Eddy. This is who she was. And you'll kind of pick up on that kind of stuff she said. As for her beginning, according to an authorized statement from the Christian Science Publishing Society, this is where things begin. Um, in 1866, she fell on a sidewalk and was told by a doctor she would die within three days. Okay, that's their official story. Okay. On the third day, she asked for a Bible and she read Matthew chapter 9, verse 2. And magically, she rose out of the bed completely healed, and she then claimed she had discovered Christian science. And so that is how Christian science got started. Um, you're making faces like you're a little skeptical about that, but that's what she promised happened, that she fell on a sidewalk. I, I, it had to be a bad fall, I would imagine. And the doctor told her, you're going to be dead within three days. And she called for a Bible. She read this verse. I'm going to read it to you. Uh, Matthew 9, 2. Then, behold, they brought him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. Okay, she read that verse. And she was magically healed. And never had to go back to the doctor or anything. It was pretty cool. Got up and walked out. I don't know if she had to pay a copay or anything after that. You know, I don't know. But um, and we'll pause right here. If you dig into their their some of their critics, of which I am one, there's actually a lot of evidence that that never happened. If that might surprise you, there's actually a lot of evidence that this doctor she claimed never existed that she was never given some type of physical ultimatum that she was going to die in three days. None of that, none of that has been proven in any way, shape, or form. We just want you to take her word that she read Matthew 9, 2, and she was magically healed. So, you know, I don't know. I'm, I guess next time you get sick, read Matthew 9, 2, and you're just going to get up. I, I don't know what to tell you, but that's what Mary Baker Eddy promised happened. So... She then wrote a book, they all write books, right? Uh, Science and Health with the Key to Scriptures. This serves as their sacred text. Um, now, I want to pause right here and again remind you again, what is one of the first signs of a cult? Does anybody remember? They go outside the Bible. Somebody in this region said it. I don't want to give you credit or you credit because they might say, well, I said it first. So you all get gold stars. But one of the first signs of a cult is when they go outside the Bible. That's when you know it's a cult. That, that, that. Now, we use commentaries and dictionaries. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is when somebody says, I've got this other book and it's from God too. You're in a cult. 
congratulations, you're in a cult, okay? When Joseph Smith said the angel Baloney Moroni talked to him in the woods and he had special glasses and a special book, ding, 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 you're in a cult, okay? Uh, when Charles Taz Russell said that you, that you would be better off reading his books than reading the Bible, telltale sign of a cult, okay? Um, uh, you know, when David Koresh claimed that he was Jesus, you know, I don't know, maybe a little cultish, okay? So the point I'm trying to make to you is the first sign of a cult is when they say, yeah, the Bible's great, but here's this other book, wink, wink, nod, nod, that's a cult. So she comes up with her own. She says, the, the, uh, Mary Baker Eddy wrote Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures. Uh, this serves as their sacred text, if you will. She also used the Bible, but she denied the inerrancy of the Bible. And she also taught that she was the only interpreter of the Bible. That's the other sign of a cult. When they say that Christians have all been wrong for 2,000 years, but don't worry, God told me the truth, and I'm here to fix all of Christianity. Ding, 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 you have a cult, okay? Um, who else did that? Well, I don't know how much time you got. Joseph Smith, hey, Christians have all been wrong, and this angel whose name rhymes with baloney told me in the woods, and I'm going to fix it, okay? I, I, I'm trying not to be funny, but... At that point, somebody tells you that, the next question is, what have you been smoking? I mean, really, come on. And so Charles Taz Russell, same thing, comes along and says, hey, I've got it all fixed and all Christians have always been wrong. Okay, but God chose you to fix the rest of us. I don't know about that. So Mary Baker Eddy did the same thing. I'm the only interpreter of the Bible. She denied the inerrancy. Um, what does inerrancy mean? It means the Bible's without error. So she believed the Bible had errors, but she didn't believe the Bible was that big of a deal to start with. So it didn't really matter. Um, except for Matthew 9, 2. Apparently that's, that's the abracadabra uh, in her theology. Um, Eddie was married several times. Uh, she had trouble staying married. I can't possibly imagine why. And, um, and, <laughs> and though she taught her followers not to use medicine or go to the doctor, later in life she changed course. Here's the cool part about Mary Baker Eddy. In Christian science theology, sickness is an illusion. Death is an illusion. But if you know her biography, when she got sick and almost died, all of a sudden she wanted a real doctor to talk to. Now she had told her followers that all that was an illusion. It's all in your mind. Now that I'm sick, somebody get me to a doctor now. So it's just funny how their theology changes when they're, when they're the one in the situation. So keep that in mind. I also want to bring this point up. Uh, Mary Baker Eddy never had any type of formal training as a doctor or a scientist. So I just want to point that out because that's very important. Uh, if you call yourself a scientist but you're not, that should be brought up. So next slide. Um, also, oh, there it is. Also bear in mind, Eddy had zero medical training in any way, shape, or form. But part of her shtick was that you won't be sick or death ain't real and all this stuff. It, it's, it's, it's pandering into that human fear of sickness and death. Now, that's a real fear, um, and we all have it to some degree, but somebody else took care of that. His name's Jesus Christ, and he don't need any help. He's, he's taking care of sickness and death because we know when if our faith's in Christ that we'll be resurrected. And as Jesus said, those who believe in me they never really do die, and so we understand that, but we don't need Mary Baker Eddy's help. But I just want to point that out, that although her kind of gimmick was health-related, she had zero training in the medical field. Zero, man. I mean, she, she, wasn't, she wasn't even a candy striper, much less a doctor, and you know what a candy striper is. I mean, th this is a joke. Let me ask you a question. I mean, you, you're reasonable people. Uh, how many of you go to the doctor when you get sick, if it's bad enough to go to the doctor? I know, I'll raise my hand. If it's bad enough, I'll go to the doctor. Now, other than that, I try to stay away from the doctor. But if it's, you know, if it's that bad and I can't fix it, then yes, I'll go to the doctor. Uh, I don't have a problem saying this. I go to a doctor here in town, and I, I trust 
uh, Dr. White to tell me the truth, okay? When I know that he's got a degree that says he's a doctor, I trust at least to some degree he knows better than I do, right? I mean, that's a reasonable assumption, okay? Um, you say, well, you're a doctor too. Not that kind of doctor, okay? And so I can't write prescriptions. I know, no fun. But you get the point I'm trying to make. So why in the world would you go to some morphine addict who has never stepped foot inside a college and let them become your health guru? That is nuts to me, but that's a cult, ladies and gentlemen. That's how they work. And so um, although this cult has died out, probably due to the fact that they teach disease and death aren't real, but yet they keep dying and getting sick like everyone else. I, is that not funny to you? I mean, it, you know, it's... They say death is an illusion, and then they die. I mean, was it an illusion? I don't know. But um, they continue to spread their message through the Christian Science Monitor, which is their news publication. Again, reminding you that they are neither Christian nor scientist. And so, next slide. Mary Baker Eddy had zero college education or seminary training and zero credentials to be a qualified Bible teacher in any way. Um, again, I, I understand that we can read the Bible for ourselves and the Holy Spirit will guide us in the truth. I, I believe that. I wouldn't be standing here if I didn't. But at the same time, somebody who has never studied hermeneutics and systematic theology in Greek and Hebrew, I'm sorry, they're not qualified to be a Bible teacher. I mean, that, on that level, I mean, that's come on. I mean, that's there, there's no way. I mean, that's... Again, back to the doctor illustration. Would you go to a doctor that never went to medical school? I'm not. I'm just going to tell you I'm not. I'll just take, you know, that's the old sawbones. Like Hank sang about that time. I'm not going to a doctor that's never been to medical school. That's insanity. Or at least has, you know, watched a YouTube video or something. But, um, so she had no credentials. She was not a Bible teacher. She was a crook. She was a fraud is what I'm trying to establish to you. Now, like... Joseph Smith, when he wrote the Book of Mormon, plagiarized the King James Bible literally hundreds of times. So did many other cultists. Mary Baker Eddy was a plagiarizer. Uh, she plagiarized her book, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures. She stole her work from P.P. P. Quimby in his book, The Science of Man. She also plagiarized and stole from the metaphysical religion of Hegel by Francis Lieber. Francis Lieber and P.B. Quimby were two other guys around back then. They wrote on stuff like this. She took what they wrote. She took some of the King James Bible. She smushed it all together and said that she had discovered the key to health using the scriptures. It's, it's fraudulent. It's fraudulent. Um, and, that, and, and that's another thing about the cults. One thing you'll notice is they don't really make something new. They take really, really old heresies and they rearrange them and then they repackage them. Can I give you an example since you're here? I mean, Awana don't get out till 720, so you've got time. For example, Jehovah's Witness is not really new. What, what, are, you, what are you saying, Pastor? All Charles Taz Russell did was take the early heresies, particularly of Arius when he taught that Jesus was not God, and he just put some polish on it and then repackaged it as this new theology. But everything the man taught that Jesus isn't God, he was just a special guy that came to show us some really cool tricks, all of that was taught by Arius during the Arian controversy, and that's why St. Nicholas, who you know is Santa Claus, punched Arius in the face, as church tradition tells us. And he won out, and Arius was kicked out of the church, and St. Nicholas was venerated, and now we celebrate him every year as Santa Claus. So there, now you know the real story of Santa Claus. goes back to St. Nicholas, who was a real person, by the way. And he, I don't know if he wore red and had a beard, but maybe he did. I don't know. But... All the, that's what these cults do. They just take old heresies and just spit shine them and repackage them. Um, that's all it is. If you look at if you look at Mormonism, they teach the tritheism, right? Not the Trinity, but tritheism, three gods. Well, the Montanists taught that in in the in the first several centuries after Christ's uh, resurrection in the early church. That's not new. That's that's been around for thousands of years. It's, and that's what these cults do. And that reminds us that the devil is not an innovator. He's a duplicator. 
And what he does is he tries to duplicate, but there's always a perverted twist. Um, case in point and example, when Jesus was tempted by the devil in the wilderness, what did the devil quote to him? Bingo. Scripture. So these cults, guys, it's not new. It's the same thing the devil's been doing from the beginning. They take a little bit of truth, but pervert it and twist it to the point that it will absolutely send you to hell, and then they repackage it and sell it for $19.95 plus shipping and handling. So there you go. Now, let's talk about some of their doctrinal errors because so far, all I've done is prove to you that Mary Baker Eddy was a quack at best, uh, or at worst, and at best, and, I'm, and this part's not really funny, somebody who had serious mental health issues that probably needed legitimate help, um, but she didn't get it. And so, uh, but either way, I've not yet shown you how her teachings were incorrect according to the Bible, and that's the more important part, right? Because even though... She was Looney Tunes. That's not really the point. The point is, is what she said wrong. And it is, and now I'm going to prove it to you. Okay, Christian science says that sin, death, and evil do not exist. You know what I mean? Come on. Anybody ever been to a funeral home? You know, have you ever seen somebody pass away? I'm pretty sure it's real. You know what I mean? I've preached a lot of funerals, and I have yet to see anybody stand up in that casket. Now, one day we will, amen, in the resurrection. I, I'm, I'm trying to be careful, but I'm also trying to give you a little humor. But come on, it's pretty real. I mean, when they close the casket, it's a done deal, you know, and so come on. And then sin's not real, really. I mean, you look at the evil around you, well, that's not real, <laughs> okay? Well, tell, so let me ask you something. If you go to Walmart and somebody stabs you and takes your wallet, are you going to call the police or are you going to say, it's not real? It's not real. <laughs> While you're sitting there bleeding out, this ain't real. This is all in my head. Come on. So they say that sin and death and evil do not exist. The Bible says they do. That sin's a big deal. It separates us from God. And that sin brought what into the world? Death. And sin is evil. But what did Jesus do to take care of that? He came, lived the perfect life, died the perfect death, rose the perfect resurrection, and he offers a pardon for sin. So if sin isn't real, then why in the world did Jesus die on the cross? It'd be pointless. It would be irrelevant. It would be cruel for God to do that if sin doesn't exist and if death doesn't exist then why do people keep dying you know i mean it's it, obviously this breaks down now what your question is and what my question is how in the world does somebody who reads above a sixth grade level believe this stuff in 2024 you'd be surprised you'd be surprised because even though christian science is not as popular as it was they're still very much around and they're thriving well today. And so um, you got to remember, the devil is a, a great manipulator. And many people have been deceived and bought into the lie. So, all right. Christian science says that there is no literal physical existence of the material universe. Okay. Watch this. Now, I sat down on wood. Would you agree with that? And what did it do? It caught me. I'm pretty sure it's real. It's real. I'm not sitting in the floor. Watch this. Because y'all didn't believe. Watch it. It did it again. It's really there. You don't have to guess. It's not in a loop. Watch it one more time. It's really there. It's not an illusion. The material world is very real. In fact, what does the book of Genesis tell us? That God created the material world out of nothing, sure. Ex nihilo. But God created material world. Your hands, your face. This is real. This is real. If you don't think it's real, go jump on 85 and, and, at nighttime with a blindfold on. And you'll find out how real the material world is, okay? 
When that semi smacks you doing 70 miles an hour, you will find out it's not an illusion. It is not an illusion. So, but they say that there is no material universe. They also say, this is big, that Jesus is not God and the incarnation and bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ did not occur. occur. Not core, that's not even a word, occur. That's another sign of a cult when they attack the person and work of Jesus Christ. That's the telltale sign of an occult, of, of, an occult, of a cult, not the occult. That's a different subject for a different day, but a cult. What did John say? Who is Antichrist but he that denies Jesus is the Christ? Can I explain that any plainer? When you deny who Jesus is, you're Antichrist. You're Antichrist. So what you'll notice about cults, something they have very much in common with each other, is they never ever give Jesus his rightful credit as God. They never do it. The Mormons say, well, he's God, but there's many gods. And one day we'll all be gods and get a magical planet. So that's pretty weird. And then you have the Jehovah's Witness. They say, no, he was a lesser God and he was just special. Well, no, he is God incarnate. And, and then you have the Christian scientist and who even knows what they believe at this point, but you understand that they deny Jesus as God. So what are some of the telltale signs of a cult? They go outside the Bible. They attack the divinity of Christ. And this is a big one. They look to one human being as being the end-all, beat-all, and the only purveyor of truth. <clears throat> kind of like a pope. <laughs> Sorry. But um, you know what I mean? So Christian science did that with Mary Baker Eddy. Then Christian science says that God is not a personal being, but a divine principle. What does that mean? Guys, the lady was on morphine. I don't think she knew what that meant. But that's what she said. And what it really is is pantheism. Okay, let's talk about pantheism just for a moment. If you took world religions in college, I'm sure you did, probably made A+. Plus. You remember that pantheism, pan, all, just basically means that everything's God. You're God, I'm God, this chair's God. We're all just one big, connected, created being. Pantheism. Uh, you find this in a lot of Eastern religions, pantheism. And when you boil Christian science down, that's pretty much what it was, okay? The, the, it, look, it's the divine principle. I'm God, you're God. We're all part of the circle of life. Like, was that Lion King that sang about that? You know, it's just we're all part of the great spirit in the sky, like that old 60s song. I mean, it's just, that's pretty much what it is. You know, don't church it up, dirt. That's what it is. It, it, it's, it's just pantheism with different terminology. And so Mary Baker Eddy was very much a pantheist. And so Christian science says that God's not a personal being, but the Bible says God is a personal being. And that's very important. God is not this indifferent force of nature. That's Allah. That's the God of a lot of Eastern religions. That's not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible is personal. He speaks, he listens, he acts, he interacts. He walked and talked with us in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. He lives within us through the Holy Spirit. And so you would have to agree with me that the God of the Bible is a personal, transcendent God. And so Christian science, as you can see, they don't even, I mean, they're, they're, it's, it's just eons apart from any resemblance of biblical Christianity but again and it's not science either right I mean that you know that's the other funny part it's neither Christian nor science I mean she was not a scientist and scientists know that when you die it's real <laughs> you, know, it's, you know and so it's it's just kind of laughable at that point but anyways all right let's do Christian science versus the Bible let's get very specific I've told you who started it why she was wacky um, all the stuff she said that made zero sense. And now we're going to just, just, we're just going to look at the Bible and look at Christian science. Cause right, the Bible is the ultimate test. Um, how do we test a, a preacher's doctrine by the Bible? That should be the final test. Not even a confession of faith. We, we have one, the Baptist faith and message, but, but really the ultimate confession, right, is the scripture. 
What does the scripture say? That's what we're interested in. All right. Christian science says man was not created of dust. But the Bible says, and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed life into his nostrils, the breath of life, excuse me, and man became a living soul, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. So automatically, even in Genesis, we have a problem between the Scripture and the teachings of Mary Baker Eddy and the Christian science movement. Mary Baker Eddy said you're not made out of dirt. You know what? The Bible says you are. And what happens when a body finally decays to the point of what? It becomes essentially dirt. So not only does the Bible say that you're all dirt bags, but science says, that's a joke. <laughs> but science says that essentially, you already knew it about me, you just didn't know it about yourself, that we're all dirt bags, okay? That's a joke. Now you can leave here tonight and say, the preacher said well, I was a dirt bag. Hey, you should have been in the Navy with me. I got called worse, but that's a different story for a different day. So you see the point that Christian science is loco and it's not Bible, okay? Moving on to the next one. Christian science denies the miracles of the Bible, which I always found that interesting. That she denied the miracles, but she herself claimed to have experienced a miracle when she read Matthew 9, 2, and magically got up and lived from her terrible fall on the sidewalk. And I'm not downplaying falls on the sidewalk because I think you can get hurt. Be careful out there. But, you know, is it going to kill you? I don't know. So she said this, the so-called, these are his, her words, not mine, the so-called miracles contained in the Holy Writ are neither supernatural nor preternatural. Okay? Again, at this point, what's she even saying? You know what I'm saying? Well, Mary, that's the problem. The Bible says the opposite. John chapter 20, verse 30, And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples. The Bible also says, John chapter 2, Jesus turned water into wine, and that's a miracle, and raised Lazarus from the dead after he'd been dead four days. That's also pretty cool. John chapter 11, etc. So Mary Baker Eddy says there's no miracles. The Bible says there is. I mean, that's just as plain as we can get. And so we know that the miracles of Scripture are historical facts. They're not myths. They've been attested to. They were attested to outside of Scripture. Uh, there's a lot of archaeological evidence. And even some of the ancient historical writers, such as Josephus, mentioned the things that Jesus did. And so I just hate to be the one to tell you tonight that the miracles are some of the most well-attested facts of history that we have. Um, and where's, they've been documented inside and outside the Bible. And so, and that's why skeptics hate the Bible. They've been attacking it for years, and yet here we are. And so, um, but anyways, so she said there were no miracles. There were, we, we stick with Jesus. Moving on to the next one. All right, conclusion. Christian science is neither Christian nor science. Does that shock you? That she was neither a theologian nor much of a scientist, I would argue at best she was a morphine addict that needed serious help. Option number two, and I don't, and I, you believe in that? St yeah, I do. She was demon possessed. Just, just flat out. Just call it like it is. She was demonically oppressed and possessed. This woman was crazy. And so there it is. It's neither Christian nor science. Um, and there you have it. They deny the divinity of Jesus. Okay, that's a big deal. Why is that a big deal? Jesus said, I and the Father are one. That means He and the Father are equal. Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. That means that He existed before Abraham was born, but Jesus was born after Abraham. That can only mean one thing, that Jesus existed before Bethlehem. He's always been. I, ergo, Jesus is God. They deny that, then they're not Christians. Um, number two, they deny hell. I mean, if hell does not exist, then the cross was the most cruel thing God the Father could have thought of. So clearly, and the Bible teaches that it does, I won't belabor that point. Uh, they deny sin. She denied the Trinity. 
They deny the biblical miracles. In other words, folks, they deny the entire Christian faith, which begs the question once again, why do they like the name Christian science? Here's my theory, okay? What did I tell you cults like to do? Especially the Mormons, they're probably the best at it. To convince you that they're just another denomination, that they're just like Baptist and Methodist, right? Two different denominations. When the truth is, they are fundamentally a different religion totally, okay? They're not just a different denomination, okay? Baptists and Methodists, that's different denominations, okay? Um, but Baptist and Christian science, <laughs> that's two different religions. We're not even playing the same sport, okay? Much less a different ball field. And so, but again, I think they use these terminologies on purpose because they want to convince you that they're just like you. Yeah, I remember one time when I was in school, we went to a buddy's baseball game. I didn't play baseball except for that one time and it didn't work out. But anyways, and went to the buddy's baseball game. We were outside. I don't remember where we were at. And there was some Mormons and they came on their bicycles, 10 speed, nice, had a little cord in the back so it sounded like a motorcycle. Just kidding about that part. But um, they came up and they started talking to us. And the first thing they did, man, the first thing they did, they asked us where we went to church. Oh, that's good. We go to church too. They asked, do we believe in Jesus? Oh, that's wonderful. We believe in Jesus too. That's the gimmick, man, is to convince you that, man, we're not a cult. We're just a different denomination. We just dress a little different and maybe use a different translation of the Bible when the truth is it's a totally different religion. It's a cult. And I've already explained Mormonism, but I just use that as an example. And so their science is not observable nor testable. That's important because true science can be observed and tested. This is how real science worked before science basically got in the pocket of the radical left. You have an hypothesis, you take it to the laboratory, and you prove it. And then you record your findings. That's science. Okay? Um, of course, nowadays, science is just whatever they want you to believe, but that's not real science, so that's a different subject for a different day. But her science was not testable and observable, okay? I mean, you can test it. I'll tell you what, next time you get sick, go home and read Matthew 9, 2 and tell me if you magically get better in three days. I mean, come on. And so, it's not testable or observable. In conclusion, Christian science is a cult and a sham. It is a sham. It is fraudulent. It's not even that good of a cult. I mean, it's like they weren't even trying. And so, you know, you have these cults that are pretty good at what they do and, and disguising themselves to look Christian like the Mormons and the J-dubs. And then you have the Christian science, and they're just out here talking about how chairs aren't real. I mean, it, it's not even that good of a cult. They didn't even try that hard. But that's what they are. And so now you have that information. Next slide, I think, is the last slide. Is that it, Brother Keggy? That's it. Wonderful. So that's Christian science. Um, not to be confused with what we'll look at next, and it may be one of your favorites, but Scientology, right? The cult of all the rich, famous people who also do other weird stuff. And so we'll talk about Scientology next, and I'll give you a hint. It's neither science nor ology. And so uh, we're going to look at Scientology next, but... We talked about Christian science tonight. We've talked about Mormonism. We've talked about Jehovah's Witness. Um, and so, there it is. One second, because I'm going to stop the podcast right here, just to save time, because it charges me by the minute.